Malik and I worked with Red Hat for several years and I would like you to uh, I would like to introduce you to something I call the big SC Linux troubleshooting chart. Uh, please if uh, there are there are some problems with uh, resolution of, uh, of this display it's better for you when you open the chart, I mean this one, and it's uh, located on this address. Uh, if you want to follow me on the slides, uh, slides are uh, available at this address. Uh, both, both the picture and the slides are available through Dropbox. I hope that nobody has something against Dropbox. So, uh, why this uh, why this presentation? Why this workshop? Uh, it seems uh, through the through the years uh, that uh, a lot of SC Linux bugs have uh, the same cause. Are uh, if I take the amount of bugs <coughs> which are reported each year. They can be uh, divided into few groups, and it, the groups can be solved uh, quite easily. Some of them, some of them not, and we will discuss. I hope the majority of bugs and how to how to solve them, how to avoid filing bugzillas in easy cases. Uh, as this basically this workshop is uh, oriented to uh, SC Linux policy. If you uh, or to avoid your con confusion or uh, uh, if you are interested in SC Linux, the, the parts of kernel. Uh, this is this workshop is not about it. This workshop is just about a Linux policy, major problems which are filed as Bugzillas, and uh, there is. I will present you uh, a workshop, a workflow, something like a, a mind process, how to go through these uh, problems and how to solve them. Okay. It also seems that uh, SC Linux documentation lacks some important info because people still think that troubleshooting of SC Linux policy problems is difficult. Uh, yeah, some of the issues are difficult to solve, but I think that the majority of them 
uh, are easy to solve or maybe with uh, help of our Selenium policy developers, they are solvable in a short time. Uh, what or who, who is the targeted audience in this case? Uh, usually system administrators, uh, developers, uh, quality assurance and also uh, people working in global support which means uh, with uh, customers. What I would like you to get from this workshop is that you will, you will be uh, more confident when solving a Linux uh, issues. Uh, I hope that your troubleshooting skills will improve and uh, what I present what I will present here is something uh, which I use for several years and I think that it's a big help even for uh, skilled uh, system administrators and um, Uh, what's, what's the structure of our workshop? Uh, fortunately, I found out that this workshop is twice as long as I thought, so we will have more time for the discussion in the end. And uh, before we get to the discussion, we will go through the chart. I will talk about the chart in parts. Then about the whole chart, uh, I would like you to uh, have, uh, to ask questions uh, immediately. Once you find something confusing or uh, you want to get some answers, please ask immediately. <coughs> then I would like to uh, show you that the chart is uh, worthwhile or worth. Uh, uh, working with. Uh, so we will apply the, the flow which is described in the chart on some bugs and uh, yeah, I hope we will find solutions. I prepared a list of bugs which are definitely solvable and uh, I would like you to uh, pick a favorite or back, back of yours, something you reported either through Bugzilla or a customer portal or you just see on your computer and we will apply the chart on, on the back you propose. It is some uh, kind of proof, or I, I'm confident that the, we will uh, prove the, the chart uh, usable. Okay, so if you, uh, I see that uh, a lot of you have uh, your notebooks, so uh, please, uh, if you if you look if you are watching the the chart right now, it seems uh, it may be uh, confusing or too uh, too difficult, but basically the the chart. Uh, has um, several nodes and the nodes are uh, identified by numbers and colors and the colors uh, mean uh, which kind of in, in which part of the of the process of the troubleshooting process we are so there are uh, these uh, What's that? Okay. So basically the chart uh, there are there are some some uh, some colors like uh, light brown. These are uh, 
uh, we are identifying the problem, then these orange ones, we are uh, analyzing the problem, and then uh, there are the blue ones, which mean uh, conservative solutions, then the red ones, uh, this is, uh, red, these are radical solutions, and uh, basically, yeah, we, we would like to go to the green one, which means that we solve the problem, uh, and the blue, uh, the, the yellow ones, uh, we need some kind of work around. So, the uh, first part is uh, problem identification. Uh, first, we need to find out if the problem we see is really SC Linux related. It usually means uh, that there can be different kinds of problems, and SC Linux problems usually uh, mani manifest themselves. Uh, by an AVC, an SC Linux denial. Either it is a denial in the uh, in the user level, or uh, either mm, yeah, either user level on the kernel level, and so on. Uh, for finding uh, SC Linux denials, uh, it, the best tool I think is for search. Uh, but it also means that uh, the audit daemon audit daemon must be running if audit daemon is not running then the avcs end up in uh, log files or in journal we have to find them or better way is to start the audit daemon and repeat our scenario which uh, caused uh, a serious denial Sometimes, uh, who of you are familiar with don't audit rules? Okay, so these rules are a bit tricky because uh, your scenario may not work and you still don't see ABCs because there are, or maybe there are, some don't audit rules which hide it. This problem is um, again illustrated in the chart, and we will get to that. Uh, other possibility when you run uh, X session applications, you can of course uh, use uh, uh, SE troubleshoot applet. You, I think that you know that. It's a small icon usually. Mm -hmm. Um, pops up when there is an AVC. Okay, so once we uh, are sure that the problem is a Linux related, then we can go to the next part of the troubleshooting process, which means we have to analyze the SE Linux denial and find out uh, where is the problem. If uh, if the process who caused the ABC is running in incorrect context, or if the object which uh, was accessed has wrong context, or is there a, a rule missing that could all of these um, causes are quite well. quite common because a C Linux policy uh, in, in comparison with um, Let's say we have a program, and the program, uh, once the developer uh, adds a new feature to the program, a C Linux policy usually does not know about it. So once the program is executed in a way that the feature is started, there may be uh, ADCs. This is uh, Okay, and again, it is uh, worth of reporting because uh, without without these uh, AVCs, 
as Linux policy developers basically they cannot know that a program X uh, was uh, uh, improved by a feature Y uh, so uh, there may be other problems in a Linux policy for example you know file context patterns uh, these patterns basically they match uh, a path a, a regular expression uh, with a context uh, once uh, once uh, these patterns are wrong you from time to time can encounter a problem like uh, yeah AVC and the AVC says uh, there is a context and a Linux policy uh, expects other context. This is also quite common and again can be solved and uh, it's uh, part of the, of the chart. Uh, you should always ask uh, if or why first why it happened and the, if you see Selenux uh, denials, do you see the consequences of, of, of some uh, forbidden access or do you see the root cause? It's always better to solve the root cause uh, because the consequences, there can be many consequences and if you try to solve consequences, you usually end up in the same situation uh, another time when uh, the AEC appears again because <coughs> the scenario uh, triggered the problem again. Okay. So, uh, once we analyzed uh, the problem, uh, we should uh, take into account conservative solutions. Uh, some of you uh, are familiar with uh, local policy modules. Uh, who, who of you uh, knows about audit to allow or creating policy module? Okay. So, please uh, try conservative solutions first before you end up with a local policy module. Because local policy module, uh, you can do a lot of things with local policy modules but you can also make policy on your system more benevolent which means you are uh, you are uh, how to say that basically you are weakening your system policy instead of uh, instead of uh, making <coughs> making a scenario work so what are these conservative solutions uh, first uh, there are some best practices how to do stuff for example uh, running running services uh, running demons uh, in like few years uh, ago people were used to run daemons uh, just by uh, init script like I mean slash at, at c slash init d slash for example snmpd uh, uh, space and start this is this makes uh, the, the, the new process does not <coughs> run in the correct context. So I advise you to uh, follow the best practices and in this case of uh, services and demons, please use uh, uh, the tool service or system CTL, which was introduced uh, in RHEL 7. Oh, system D, of course. So uh, other conservative solutions are uh, booleans. Booleans are designed to switch on or switch off a set of rules and uh, there are more than 250, maybe 300 Booleans right now. So a lot of 
possible combinations uh, are already, uh, I must admit, poorly documented, but are available. Uh, other conservative solutions, they use an SE, SE manage tool. Who of you uh, used at least once SE manage? Okay, so this tool gives you some opportunities how to solve problems and I consider SEManage the conservative solution. So SEManage enables you to uh, redefine a network port, uh, redefine uh, file <coughs> context uh, patterns and also allows you to make a domain which was before enforcing, now make it permissive. This kind of, uh, this kind of uh, uh, work or this, kind, uh, this, this command allows you to make just one domain permissive while the rest of the system remains in enforcing mode. So, if, if uh, you know the set enforce command, I think that you don't need uh, to run it with zero anymore. And uh, also <laughs> remember that, uh, that uh, each, run, each execution of uh, set enforce zero makes then Walsh weak. Okay, next uh, there are radical solutions. These radical solutions usually involve local policy modules uh, and tools like audit to allow which is able to generate a policy module on demand. Uh, it usually uh, is uh, it usually does uh, create rules. Uh, you can also define types in a policy module, and uh, of course uh, you can also change change roles and uh, other stuff, which uh, which is uh, which needs some advanced uh, um, reading about it. I recommend Dan Walsh. Uh, then watch the blog uh, and I have to repeat that again that please consider conservative solutions first. <coughs> it may happen that even the radical solutions are not usable, uh, meaning uh, they does not help you solve the problem. In this case uh, you uh, need some workaround and mm, of course you should uh, file the problem, report the problem either through our customer portal or through Reddit Bugzilla, depending on what's, what your favorite uh, kind of bug reporting. Uh, yeah, yeah. I have to uh, say that even if I talk a lot, a lot about a Linux policy, the fact that you see an SE Linux denial does not mean that the problem is always in a Linux policy. Sometimes the problem is in the application who triggered the SE Linux denial, or sometimes is the problem in kernel. But uh, this is out of topic for the chart right now uh, and I, I recommend uh, contacting our developers through uh, bug reports on, or on IRC channels and so on. So before, uh, yeah, the, I think that the chart is uh, explanatory but uh, you usually need two, two iterations to go uh, before you find some kind of solution. 
uh, Y2 iterations uh, because um, many of you know that there is a difference between enforcing and permissive mode. In permissive mode, uh, when you uh, imagine a running program, permissive mode means that the program is allowed to do whatever it wants. But in enforcing mode, some of those actions will be uh, denied when the asymmetric policy does not expect such behavior. It means that both in both modes you get a different list of asymmetric denied. It usually means that in uh, in both modes you get a different list of asymmetric denied. That's why we need two iterations. Uh, I, I have to admit that not all SC Linux denials uh, that, that you see are really uh, or are necessary to fix. Some of them are redundant. The, the program works fine even if there are additional SC Linux denials. And some and the rest of the denials uh, are, or the excess, the excess which triggered the asymmetric denial uh, is necessary. In that case, uh, that must be fixed in asymmetric policy. Do you have questions uh, right now? Uh, or if you have questions, please ask uh, right now. And then we will go through a list of bugs which I preferred. Will mm -hmm. uh, you be talking more about the domain? Or? Yeah, I could talk because as, uh, the, the workshop is longer than I thought. So yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, so uh, I have, in that case, I have an example and we can show. Okay. It's too small, right? So uh, uh, I think that uh, yesterday, uh, yesterday a guy called Etienne filed a bug, which is related to Prosody. Uh, uh, my my knowledge about Prosody is very shallow. But I know how to find a uh, Linux denials, and if you present, uh, if you give me the scenario, I can repeat it. So I basically did what uh, at Etienne. Uh, this is this is the bug report. I'm sorry. So Etienne filed uh, filed a bug where he uh, speaks about HTTP versus HTTPS uh, uh, version of uh, oh, the, the prosody, prosody uh, uh, daemon has some kind of uh, embedded HTTP server inside. And the HTTP server can serve 
HTTP and HTTPS requests. Oh, connections, connections. And what he found out that uh, there was an AVC or two AVCs on his machine. And the AVCs basically tell us that a process running in this context, prosody underscore T, wanted to bind, this is the name bind operation, so it wanted to bind to a port 5281 uh, on TCP. Uh, because a Linux policy, uh, nobody before tried that, <coughs> or didn't report that, I don't know. Uh, so a Linux policy does not have such a rule which would allow it. Uh, but of uh, but uh, we can, for example, uh, of course we can solve uh, this problem. This is one of the most uh, frequent ones. And basically what we need is, <coughs> here there is a nice tool, or nice tool, yeah, uh, one of the most useful ones. And the tool says that <coughs> this port 5281 uh, the only SC Linux label for this port is unreserved port T. Uh, if, if the port is a default port for the application, there should be a better labeling than just unreserved port T. Let's look at the other port which Etienne uh, uh, wrote about and we see that port 5280 is called also a Jabber inter-server port T. So uh, it seems that the HTTP, uh, HTTP connections are okay and HTTPS connections are not. So I prepared uh, basically, I, what do you see here is uh, it, a virtual machine with rel 7.2 and um, basically when I try to yeah first you see that we have enforcing mode and we also have there is a tricky tricky boolean called uh, NIS, NIS enabled it, it was uh, before it was called uh, allow IP bind and this boolean is one of the mighty ones. It enables a lot of uh, applications to bind to a lot of ports. Uh, but our scenario does not have to, uh, anything to do with NIS or yellow pages. So this boolean should be off. So and Let's check the status of the service. So the service is stopped right now. When we change the configuration in that way, uh, Etienne uh, proposed, he basically, oh, it's visible, sorry. Sorry? Just VI. Yeah, okay, okay. Okay, so basically Etienne uh, advised us to enable, enable a module called HTTP, so we do that, sorry, and now let's say first we want to see if there are any AVCs or user AVCs or Linux errors in the last, let's say, 10 minutes. So there are none. Uh, let's start the service. The service starts, it seems. But when I run the all search again, I see these two. Basically, they are the same. They just differ by the time. 
but uh, I see this uh, uh, Assyrian's denial. As you can see, that's the same what uh, Etienne was uh, reporting. And again, here is the port and the operation name file. So now we have, uh, if you, if you uh, went through the chart on your own, then you would see basically two solutions. Uh, either you can uh, redefine the port number or you can create a policy module. I think that uh, we should follow the conservative solution first, which means to uh, add the number 5281 to the definition of Jabber server port 3, which was the same port as uh, which works basically. So, but uh, do I, I'm running the system in enforcing mode, and, and I'm not sure if I see all of these AVCs. Maybe there is some uh, operation uh, which is denied, but the program, because the, the, the demon was not able to bind to that port, he gave up, and we don't see the other uh, uh, excesses. So now let's come to uh, the permissive uh, domains. So basically in RHEL 7 there are several permissive domains. This one, uh, these ones. So uh, while, uh, meanwhile the rest of the system is running in enforcing mode, these or processes running under this context run as if the system was in permissive mode. So they are allowed to do anything, almost anything. So now we can we switch the uh, prosody domain to permissive and we will check if there are additional AVCs which need to be put, uh, solved. So, so uh, sorry. So, once the, once uh, the uh, command uh, succeeds, we will see that the prosody domain uh, was added to the list of permissive domains. So you can see here up that these these domains are defined in a C Linux policy as permissive, and these domains are defined as local customizations. Yeah. They will survive reboot. So now let's uh, let's repeat uh, the scenario. So let's uh, stop the service and uh, so these are the two ADCs we saw before. Uh, let's start the service again and there are more AVCs. Okay, so this 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 uh, user AVC is basically uh, the execution of uh, Semenich Semenich permissive. We changed the policy in such a way that prosodity from now on is a permissive domain, and this is basically the the change. And here. Uh, we started uh, the daemon again and because the daemon before before it was running as enforcing domain we can see here the success success now and exit code minus 13 now the domain is a permissive one so we see success yes exit code 0 
and we are pretty sure right now that there are no additional ABCs which need to be solved or allowed. So, other possibility uh, to basically, I've, the, the, this uh, this helped us to find out that which rules are needed and uh, if if the set of rules is complete, I would say. And from now on, we can either, as I said, create a policy module allowing that kind of access or redefine the, the port definition. So let's go, let's go for the uh, conservative solution. So here is so this is port 5280 which is allowed and we need to uh, add the number 5281 basically we do that by Okay, so we, we use again a cmanage command and we instruct uh, the policy <coughs> to, uh, to add another number to the port definition. So right now you can see that uh, the Jabber interserver port T is defined as these three port numbers. Uh, so from now on we can uh, it, it, uh, the, the scenario should not generate any AVCs. So let's let's make the domain uh, enforcing again. So again we use a cmanage uh, permissive command, but now we use minus d, and minus d means that we remove the prosody underscore t from the set of permissive domains. So after this command, the prosody domain is enforcing again. Yeah, it takes time, but it will, it will, it will be faster in RHEL 7.3 because uh, a lot of optimizations uh, were done by uh, SC Linux uh, developers. Uh, that, that those just do left. <laughs> okay, so uh, port, the port number is uh, redefined and we will uh, rerun the scenario again. We are in enforcing mode. The prosody domain is enforcing also. So you can see. Sorry. So, the prosody domain is not in the list of uh, and uh, not in the list of permissive domains anymore. So we will stop the service. Let's see. There are, as you can see, there are uh, another two user ABCs. One of them is we switched the uh, prosody domain to enforcing again. And the second one is we redefined the port number. Okay, so let's let's start the server. It's running, and is there another ABC? It's not. So this we basically solved a deficiency in a Linux policy right now. Uh, to and we used the right solution and uh, the, we just need uh, to wait until Assyrian policy developers make the port 5281 a default port uh, in the policy. Till that time. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, uh, let's say there's an example. Uh, uh, I, uh, I want to 
some other package which also uses this port. Mm -hmm. And uh, how it's so then like uh, it's uh, my package or the new uh, package is not server. Mm -hmm. So how to solve this? Okay, uh, may I ask which package it is? Oh, it's just uh, an engineering. Okay, uh, so. Um, Either oh, let's let's uh, see what's said in in policy. In policy uh, basically expects that the mm -hmm, sorry, sorry. Um, yeah. So basically, uh, a Linux policy expects that the Prosody server is able to bind to port. Uh, port. Sorry. No. Mm. <coughs> okay. So in this case, we see that there is an allow rule. If you install. Uh, some other application which will use the same port so you have to check if there are uh, other uh, rules which allowed name bind to that port uh, of course we can uh, use again uh, this se search tool is very handy and uh, i cannot imagine my life without it <laughs> I mean my professional life. <laughs> okay, so you can see that uh, there is about 39 rules which allow different uh, processes to bind to a port which uh, is defined as uh, Jabber inter-server port T. Okay. So, but it may happen that your application is not able to bind to that port and you are not able to find a proper context for the application. In that case, you would need a local policy module. And the port can have only one policy or label? Uh, it's uh, no, no. Um, as you can see here, that uh, the port number 5280 is basically in two intervals. Like, first, there is this one interval presenting just one number, and there is another interval, this. So, yes, the number, the port, the number of the port can be. Uh, from Selenux point of view, visible under under different names, uh, but it brings some problems in the future. Uh -huh. okay. But it, a Selenux policy defines some or these ports, so yeah, it's it's so, common. So it's better to uh, to set to allow the application just use Jabber interserver port than creating new label for the port. Uh, yes, but uh, these network ports, the the name basically, uh, these are uh, you cannot define a new port in a local policy module. It's one of the constraints. You can define a port name in policy, but in local policy module, you can just use it, or via SE manage, you can add or remove uh, the numbers. Yeah. That's one of the limitations. Local policy modules are mighty tool, but they you cannot do everything with them. Okay. So. Are there any questions? Okay. So uh, let's go. Uh, let's go to the to the list. Uh, I create. 
So, uh, I think that Zdeněk, Zdeněk uh, sits here, uh, lately uh, filed a bug which basically uh, demonstrates a problem that S tunnel, you, uh, who, who of you know S tunnel or use S tunnel? Okay, so uh, it is, uh, it is uh, how to say it? a way how to secure a connection uh, using an SSL. And the scenario which was at the beginning is that S tunnel was not able to write uh, to lock any messages. It means that uh, I, either nobody used it before or used it but didn't report it, or uh, they were uh, running on a system without a Sirinux, or maybe a Sirinux in permissive mode and they didn't bother filing uh, the reports. So, uh, I again created a small reproducer for this, but before we get to the reproducer, you can see that the ABC again, uh, it says that S tunnel, S tunnel is not able, and here is operation search. This search operation usually means uh, that uh, you are trying to find a file by its name, for example. And uh, it's not, uh, S tunnel is not able to find a file, and uh, in this case, uh, uh, before before you can write to a log file, you should be able to, to find that log file or create it. So the bug report, basically, uh, after after I, I used the scenario uh, mentioned by Zdeněk, I executed the same scenario, but after switching the external domain to permissive, so I get uh, I get other SC Linux denials, and now when we see the SC Linux denials, that uh, it uh, there is something interesting that oh, it is always those ABCs are always talking about var uh, var underscore log underscore t. Uh, that seems strange because usually uh, if there is a log file. Um, for I mean not log for uh, uh, yeah lo logging basically logging messages then uh, such files or such directories should have a special context uh, let's see okay so this this tool matchpathcon tells us What's the what's the expected context on directory slash var slash log? Let's say that uh, we create uh, we create a log file for the S tunnel, and what what should be the context of uh, of that file? And a Linux policy or matchpathcon tells us that again it's varlock t but, but varlock t in the sense uh, of uh, there are some general contexts and some specific contexts and even more specific contexts like directory slash var has a context uh, var t when we go inside and ask for the context of var log, we get another context. If we try, for example, what's what's PCP. here? Okay, for example, PCP. PCP against 
it again has even more specific context. So we expect that the stml log file sh should have a more specific context. Again, we can use this uh, extremely useful tool seinfo and we just grab for stml. Uh, sinfo minus t it means that it prints all defined types. And we can see here that here are some defined types, but uh, type for a log file is not among them. So basically the bug, which was reported by Zdeniek, tells us two things. That even uh, that we don't have a special SE Linux type for log files created by Astano. And then if even if we had a, such a type, there would be an ABC because we were not able, or the Astano process was not able to get to that file because was not able the process was not able to search through var slash var slash log directory to find it. So uh, now we have again we can go through the uh, same scenario as before. Like we can switch the S tunnel to permissive. Uh, maybe uh, you saw that. Uh, the S tunnel uh, T is uh, in the list of permissive domains. That's of course my change because when I reproduced the scenario, I followed the I followed the chart. I switched it to S tunnel. S tunnel is uh, by default not uh, a permissive domain. So, and uh, now, uh, once, let's say, I have, uh, yeah, I have a reproducer, so uh, bear with me for a while. And, okay. Okay, so I will run a test case, and this test case rip, uh, triggers the ABCs which are mentioned in the bug report. Uh, as you can see, here are a few, uh, few fails. I already added a special part to that test case with, which checks for the existence of the type we spoke about and uh, which check uh, for the existence of allow rules. And uh, the result of the test case should be some AVCs and we will uh, uh, transform those AVCs into a local policy module. We will load it and uh, from that time it should work without AVCs. Okay, so let's let's see. So the test case basically triggered following ABCs, and now uh, this this uh, procedure is again described in the slides. Uh, there are more slides than I will present here because uh, we don't have enough time, and I think that. Uh, those slides are uh, for those who are interested because the uh, the Selenux, poly, uh, Selenux troubleshooting chart has about 40 nodes some of them are self-explanatory some of them are difficult to understand and that's why you can see a detailed description of each node in the slide uh, basically, you just uh, each node has a unique number, and in the slides you can uh, you can find an appropriate slide for the node. So we have uh, a list of SE Linux denials. We create we create a policy module out of it. Let's see what's in the policy module. 
uh, to generate a policy module, uh, a very handy tool is Audit to allow. It basically creates a, a TE file, which is a text <coughs> file containing the definition of types and rules. And then there are some .fc files for file context, and it also compiles the policy into binary form. So, if if we just if we just uh, compiled this module and loaded it into memory, the ADCs uh, would stop appearing. Let's let's see. Okay, so. To, to load an, uh, a compiled policy module, there is a tool called, called stmodule. Uh, as you can see here, uh, audit to allow advises us to how to do that. <sighs> so the system is in enforcing uh, the stmodule domain. Let's see it. Standard domain. Okay, so let's let's remove the standard domain from the list of permissive domains. Okay, and uh, let's run the. Let's run the test case again. Now, even if uh, or, uh, the the, po the policy mo module is uh, not uh, written uh, as it should be, but the purpose of uh, um, hiding ADCs or adding allow rules, it will do just fine. Okay, so uh, okay, so we started. I think that uh, yeah, that here here you can see there are uh, different different ABCs uh, that they are related to snort and it's they are not. Uh, let's do the. Okay, here, here are the last, <coughs> last external uh, denials, and uh, since that time there are just uh, snort denials. Um, so our test case passed. There are no additional denials. Uh, it seems to work, but uh, there is uh, if uh, there is still something to improve. And the improvement should be here in the local policy module because we should define a special type for log files accessible uh, for STNL. Let's say that we will create, sorry, uh, we will create a, f a type called S tunnel log T and we will define it I think it's this way Uh, maybe you wonder why there are two uh, two lines. Uh, this first line speaks about the slash var slash log directory because 
uh, when you create a file in a directory, it means that first you have to write to the directory, you have to be able to write to the directory, like to add uh, an inode, and then you can create the file. If you cannot write to that directory, you cannot create a file inside. And okay. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I meant a typo. Yeah, yeah. File type. File type. I don't End of the line, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. Mm, no, I think that the problem is uh, when uh, this line, this file type, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm using a macro. A macro. Yeah. Uh -huh. And when you using macros, uh, there are no semicolons. semicolons. But I think uh, encounter unknown type, okay. Uh, this require section basically says that uh, I would like to use definitions which are already in the policy. And what else we need? We need a type transition rule. Type transition rule. And, but we will see that. No, we won't. So, uh, uh, is anybody of you familiar with type transition rules? Okay. Basically, type transition rules says um, that uh, either uh, when a process executes a file, what should be the context of the newly created process? Or when a process creates a file, what should be the context of the newly created file or newly created directory? So uh, these type transition rules basically say uh, what happens when a situation, uh, uh, when a process does something. So we will uh, create uh, a type transition rule which says that if uh, S tunnel, if a process running under S tunnel T uh, creates a file, then the file should get an S tunnel log T context. And where? In yes. So the last line basically tells us that if S tunnel wants to create a file in a directory which is labeled var log T, then the file would get label S tunnel log T. And it's S tunnel T, not S tunnel exec T. S tunnel exec T is uh, for the, the process. Uh, no, no, no. S tunnel T is uh, context of the process. S tunnel exec T is context of the file which oh, is so lying on the file system. And uh, yeah, uh, you can see basically here. I can illustrate it. Uh, let's say that. Uh, S tunnel, uh, we will we will see if S tunnel is exit if init D or system D is able to run S tunnel. It is. It we can see here that uh, init T is context for system D or um, init um, daemon, but in rel seven and uh, Fedora it is system D. So if system D uh, starts a process which lying on the file system uh, the, has uh, this context, then the newly created process has this 
context. Okay, so the the policy we created is uh, yeah, we we are able to compile it. It seems that uh, some of uh, it is syntactically correct. Now let's see if we are able to load it because there can be other problems. Okay. Previously you installed the my policy as well at a different time, so this command just replaced. Uh, yes, yes, that's correct. Uh, if you, uh, if uh, the, the important thing is that uh, the policy uh, definition file, I mean the .te file, it has a line and the line says that I'm a policy module with this name and with this version. If you compile it uh, and you leave the name the same, then new module inserted will replace the old one with the same name. So you, it's not necessary to remove the module and load it again, you just replace it. And if I change the version? Uh, it should replace it also. Okay, so we have the policy module, we loaded it, so uh, now we can search for the... Okay, let's search for the rule we edit, so S-Tunnel... Okay, so the module we inserted edit uh, this this rule and now let's see if it's uh, enough uh, first i would uh, like to remove the file so okay the file is not there Okay, it does not work. So, it, it, it didn't work because I forgot to add some rule. And basically the rule was, as you can see here, uh, uh, the best practice for uh, writing log files is that you always uh, append. Uh, log files should not be writable anywhere, like uh, the, the purpose of log file is to keep the history unchanged, so you should always use append. And S-Tunnel uh, does it correctly, and basically uh, we forgot to add the append uh, permission into the policy module. So now I will add it and so here you can see that we can create the file, we can open it, but uh, we cannot append. Uh, these things, uh, I mean the edit uh, the editing of the policy uh, file uh, could be of course done uh, by the audit to allow. Uh, in the slides uh, there is um, there are two ways. Audit to allow can uh, generate rules without using of macros or with the usage of macros. 
macros have one significant uh, benefit is that uh, the macro can expand to more rules and the defined mac macros usually uh, take into account uh, several operations which are needed for uh, accomplishing some goal like when uh, creating a log file means you have to write to the directory you should be able to create the file and other things okay let's can compile it now let's uh, load it and uh, i hope that it will it will be all from uh, from this test case okay As you can see that uh, the the checks are here green, so all the all the rules uh, which I uh, uh, which seemed uh, uh, which are necessary are present, and also you can see that the estaminet process is running, so uh, our local policy module was successful. Of course, it can happen that there are additional ABCs, but not, not in this case. So all the ABCs we saw, we transformed them into rules. Uh, then we somehow improved the rules by defining a new type for a standard log file. And that was all um, necessary. It, it failed, but uh, it's uh, something... Yes, the only thing that failed is here. So uh, we have the rules, but the file context pattern for the file is still incorrect. I will show you. So we can again use this matchpad control and we will ask what's the, what's the correct context for the file. It says this. So in now we have a discrepancy between file context patterns and the policy. Because the policy says when a log file is created by a stunnel, give it a, this label to the file. But file context patterns will give something else, another context. So Let's uh, use again Semenage to improve the situation uh, or maybe I can show you what happens if we don't do it. So I will, I will just touch uh, while log has done. The, basically the test case uh, cleans up after itself. That's why we don't see the s But I can course I can of course change it so I will I will remove okay let's run it again so now the test case does not clean up on itself so there will be the external log file on the file system and we will see that the file has a different label and a different label than what policy uh, thinks about it. And we will run a restore con, which is again one of the most uh, useful tools to correcting contexts uh, on file system. And basically, the tool will screw up. Okay, so the file was created correctly, <coughs> uh, will, will, was co created with the correct context, as you can see, external log 
but once I once I start uh, restore con I think that the uh, recursive is not necessary right now so you can see that restore con changes context of the file uh, but to uh, worse but to worse so if you if if I run the t the test case again, we will see uh, again as Linux denials. So the solution again, a conservative one, is to change or to define a context for the path. So we do that by again a semanage tool. Uh, So this uh, this command this command will change the file context patterns database and it will add uh, a connection between stml log t context and this path. From from now on, uh, the matchpad con will say that. The right context for our file is this. So this is the situation we wanted. Now we can run restorecon again and it will it changes the context to the more specific one, which is correct. Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah, it is, of course, it is possible. Uh, you can see that when I, when I executed uh, audit to allow, it basically created uh, several files, this, this four one. And here the my policy FC means, FC means file context. And if you want the context to be part of the module, you edit this file and you basically place the definition if I yeah so yeah you can do that by editing this fc file uh, yeah uh, we are or do you have other questions you, you can basically ask anything as Linux related, uh, and I hope I can answer. Uh, do you have some uh, recommendation for creating possibly Linux related bugs, like what to put to the description, uh, what information it should contain? Of course, some uh, ABC denial mm -hmm. message, probably Serial uh, Policy uh, yeah. version, but. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, definitely. I usually recommend uh, put there the SC Linux policy package version, like which version of SC Linux policy was installed. Uh, sometimes the version of kernel is is also handy. And uh, when when uh, don't use uh, grep for finding ABCs, please use uh, all search because when you uh, when you use grab, it does not catch all the lines. Uh, I will show you. The usual dungeon source is called. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, sorry. So we are looking for, yeah, for example, uh, type ABC and type syscola lines. And yeah, there are a lot of them. Sorry, that's uh, so. So this is uh, the the information um, which the SC Linux policy developer needs to see is 
both these lines. But when you use all search, uh, it will uh, provide even more information. For example, I can show you uh, what's the difference. Uh, let's see if there are. Okay, no. Okay, so the difference uh, between uh, just grabbing the audit file is that uh, you see uh, some cryptic, I would say cryptic uh, hashes like this, for example. Uh, when you use OSearch, uh, it has uh, a feature or a parameter which is able to interpret those hashes and the, the output looks uh, in a different way. So now the, the hashes, uh, the cryptic hashes are away and you can see that here are like uh, paths complete path and here also yes so please use all search uh, a Linux policy version uh, if you uh, gather all ABCs in enforcing mode a Linux policy developer will most likely ask you for a list of ABCs gathered in permissive mode so if you provide both lists, you save one round trip time. And uh, when filing uh, bug or uh, customer case, uh, if you uh, describe the scenario, uh, what what happened, uh, it even more. It's even more. Uh, uh, informative for the developer and again for me because it will most likely end up uh, in my queue okay mm -hmm. um, you mentioned that uh, module can uh, contain a file context definitions so that I don't have to label uh, the files or folders manually using yes. the se manage tool mm -hmm. Uh, okay, uh, using as image, mm -hmm. you can uh, you can use a regular expression. Yes. Like all download folders in all home folders for various uh, users. Mm -hmm. So you use regular expression. Uh, I was able to get uh, uh, absolute path working uh, mm -hmm. as a file context definition using the gen context function mm -hmm. in a module, it worked. Mm -hmm. I was able to use SE module with uh, the regular expression, it worked. But when I use the same regular expression in the same module instead mm -hmm. of the absolute path, it stopped working. Is there some good job using regular expressions in SE Linux? Uh, I think that the, the usual problem is, is here. This is specification. I mean that. Uh, did you use uh, Did you use this dot asterisk? Uh, con yeah, it looks. Yeah, it looks exactly the same. Okay, so maybe I will uh, after after the workshop I will go and we will see the problem. Okay, on your so computer. no generic advice. Uh, no, no. Okay. Uh, even you. for example, if you specify. If you specify these tokens like twice mm -hmm. in the pattern, then co it could be a problem when like uh, interpreting it and so on. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, usually, when I try to understand the ABCs, I uh, would like to know where to look for more explanation, like what is the type like. Uh, where are what are similar types? Uh, if there are any booleans and 
not only just one line, but to one, one paragraph of explanation what it does and so on. Is there any landing page how to move forward with uh, this ABC? Yeah, that's, that was the poor Assyrian documentation I was talking about. Uh, yes, these booleans uh, are documented, uh, but uh, there yeah, are. That's one yeah, that's the one line. Unfortunately, we uh, or there are there are HTML pages, part of a C Linux policy doc package, and if you don't find the description, the, the detailed description in those HTML files, I think that we don't have a better documentation. I think that, uh all this to why sometimes uh, give an advice to enable Boolean. Yes, yes. But uh, if you go through the chart, you will see that uh, the recommendations given by Audit to allow are not always the best ones. Yes. So, is there any other helper for the troubleshoot? Yeah, S, uh, SE alert, uh, basically, this. Uh, Let's see what's um, SE alert is a tool uh, which goes through the reported Linux denials. There is a, a, a database and it tries to interpret wh what happened and gives you some advice. Uh, and you also but you asked about the booleans, and I'm afraid uh, we the Assyrian documentation lacks a lot of documentation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sorry, we are running out of time. If you have other questions, please come to me. We will talk personally. Yeah, yeah. those who ask, so here. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that he was a question. So, you have to be a question. You have to be a question. You have to be a
Ty jsou tady, ale jako jestli, já nevím, na tom nic se napadá, ale nevím. To mě tam se mělo být. Jo, tak to se